Lord, we thank you for this moment that you've given us. We ask that your strength, power, and anointing would rest, rule, and abide on us. Let this word go beyond these four walls. Let these words penetrate the hearts of those who believe and those who do not. Lord, I ask that there would be change, continual change, that we will be witnesses of over and over and over. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I'm going to ask that you would turn to Romans 5th chapter. I'm going to re read three verses there. Romans 5, 9 through 11. And then I'm going to go over to 2 Corinthians. And I will read four chapters in 2 Corinthians, <coughs> chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. Romans 5, 9 through 11, 2 Corinthians 2, 14 through 17. I'm going to speak from the thought of the subject, performance-based Christianity. Performance-based Christianity. <laughs> Romans chapter 5, beginning at verse 9. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled by, to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 beginning at verse 17. I'm sorry, beginning at 14, forgive me. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. And makes not, excuse me, and makes manifest the Savior, the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. In them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death. And to the other savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. <coughs> Much of the reason that people shrink away from what we call Christianity in my view, is because religion has made it a performance-based system of belief. I say that again? People are shrinking away. People are stepping away. Some people who have even been raised in church or raised in Christianity, they're moving back, stepping back away because Religion has made it a performance-based 
system of belief. All right. You do this, yeah. you get that. Yeah. You act this way, and you're a good guy, and you're going to make it into heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> we possibly, especially believers, have created some of this performance based system in our relationships in our homes. We base how we conduct ourselves in our relationships in our homes on how people perform. I am glad today that I serve a Savior who died for me while I was a sinner. I'm glad that I serve a Savior who loves me in spite of myself. There's no level of performance that I can show that will give me Jesus brownie points. But we base our, our systems of beliefs or, or the how somebody is doing based on how they are performing. I'm here to call the devil a liar today and to let you know that you are free to be you. Jesus died for every one of us in the midst of our crap. The effectiveness of Jesus declares that in spite of us acting a certain way, that he still loves us regardless, with a total and complete unconditional love. The effectiveness of the relationship in Jesus declares that in spite of you acting this way, I'm going to treat you that way. And life is based so much on our performances. And we bring those performance-based systems into our belief systems of Jesus. Can I let you know that Jesus loved us anyway? Is that good news for anybody? Jesus loved us anyhow. I saw I saw an article, and I'm not I'm not big on um, stuff I see on Yahoo. But um, and I'm just going to say this because it was out there. Um, some of you have heard of the Jonas Brothers. One of the gentlemen was the with the Jonas Brothers is now a professed atheist. And the reason that he said that he is an atheist now was because of the fact that he could not live up to the standards of Christianity. And then he, he began to speak about his colleagues in his group. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. The newsboys. See how much I read stuff? The newsboys. Sorry. Anybody heard of the newsboys? Are we still going to say what? I 
I'll read that story. The newsboys, one of them a Christian band, one of them is now a professed atheist. And then he started slamming his other group members. And say, they're not as good as you think they are. They're not as good. They're not so goody two shoes, let me tell you. But you know what it is, man? That's, that's us. That's us. Living our lives based on how we perform as Christians. There's not a person in this room that it will ever be perfect. says you are supposed to do. And that starts from right up there. Oh, that God bless God standing up. <laughs> Starting from him all the way down. But if we live our lives as believers based on performance, we will always have these expectations of saying, well, you got to do this, and you got to do this, and you better do that. Oh, Lord, oh, I thought you were a Christian. I thought you went to church. And we will do all of these things and base that person's life and relationship and our relationship with them on their performance. Yeah, yeah. with the same unconditional love that Jesus loved us with. We use the Bible. We have used the word of God to exact punishment, to lay expectations and requirement upon other people. We will read the Bible, God's love letter to us, and draw lines of law and demands upon other people. But it is the call of God in our lives to love one another with an unconditional love. The same unconditional love that Jesus gave for us. Now, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I'm not talking about us now running out here and living this willy-nilly life and doing everything that we feel like doing and expect that people are supposed to love us in spite of. I want, I want you to catch this now. I want you to understand. See, the, the contrast, the contrast is that we don't do these things to perform. The contrast is, is that we have a Savior that loved us so much that we can't help but follow him and do the things that he gives instruction to do based on our relationship with him, not because we are Christians. Can you hear that? It can, it can easily dovetail into the other. And before we know it, we're these goody two shoes and we're going to act like everybody else is going to hell in a handbasket. Well, I'll tell you something. I came off the street, and I'm glad that my Jesus loved me enough in the midst of my mess. He didn't wait. 
Until I got myself all cleaned up and I, I got the right Bible and I put on a suit and tie and said, Praise the Lord, I am your pastor. Now God loves me because I'm a pastor. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm a pastor? Because he loved me enough to love me. And then he put that love in me to share that love with someone else. I love Jesus and I love people. So you know what? I'm a pastor. <laughs> that is not what I want it to be. <laughs> but what happens? What happens when our life is based on relationship with Him? What happens when our life is based on relationship with each other? What happens if we, if we do things, if we operate in things because of who we are, not because of what we do? We are, as homo sapiens, I'm going to know about that. I'm going to leave Facebook message or something. We are, as homo sapiens, called human beings. Correct? Speak about that one real quick. But we, in our interaction with each other, conduct ourselves as human doings. Well, my husband didn't do this. Don't look at me. <laughs> my wife, if my wife would have done this, don't look at me. <laughs> what do we do? We base all of our stuff, we base all of our stuff <laughs> on performance. That person, now that, that husband, that wife, that child, that pastor, that parishioner, all of those people, now you are required to be a human doing. You do what the Bible says. You love me the way that I want you to love me. And you better do it. I promise you today that I am a human being and I'm going to mess up sometimes. Can I, can I, I'll let you know that right now. Now your question is, is are you going to treat me in the midst of a mistake based on my performance or based on our relationship? Okay, okay, right. Oh, I'm, a, I'm not a human doing. I'm a human being. As wonderful as you all are. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. God bless you. <laughs> as wonderful as you all are, you're still wrapped up in that skin. Yes. And if I love you and judge you based on performance, we're going to have a problem. All right. oh, yeah. But what happens? If I love you because you're you, and, and we can accept each other even in the midst of our faults, Tom was on the dean's list at NIU this past semester. Karen made the president's list. Now what if Paul and Renny based their relationship on Tom only making the dean's list? If Tom flunked out of college, If Tom 
flunked out of college, can I tell you that these two would love him unconditionally? Yes. 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 Karen made the president's list. I don't know who the president was, but he... <laughs> Richard and Tiana are not going to love her because she made the president's list. You hear what I'm saying? It's based on our love and yeah. unconditional love that inspires people to do more and be more. To be the best we can be because of the love that's being poured out in yeah. us. Yeah. This message is not intended for one person to say to another person, you don't treat me with unconditional love. I know how we do. When we get home, pastor said it. And we go out and we act smack stupid. We do all kinds of stuff. And then we come home and say, oh, you're going to love me, aren't you? Pastor said, you have to treat me with unconditional love. Yeah, yeah. I treat them. I love you. Get the heck out. I still love you. <laughs> no, I'm, the intention, the intention of this message is by design for each one of us to look at ourselves and ask the question, where have I relinquished what Jesus did for me? All right. Come on. Where have I given up what Jesus did for me? How many, how many folks do we have in the room that have accepted Jesus as their Savior? You know how you can do that? Because he loved you enough to hang, bleed, and die for you. By design, where have I relinquished what Jesus did for me? I have to love you with an unconditional love. And I have to choose that no matter what your performance is, you are still a human being, not a human doing. But I understand this. When Jesus was presented with the woman, who was caught in adultery. He stopped the ones who wanted to try to kill her. But he looked at her and he said, I'm not here to accuse you, but I do say this one thing to you. Go and sin no more. Go and sin. See, it was now the relational aspect of, his, of what he had with her that sent her forth to live better in her life, to do better in her life, to have greatness in her life because she was touched by Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. Very quickly, very quickly. This pat these two passages of scripture. I want to uh, I want to move into 17 of 2 Corinthians 2. I just want to take a quick look at that. I ask you to go back in and, and take a look. It, it's a, it's a, both of these passages are really interesting. The this, this 2 Corinthians text is just fascinating to me. And there are four times in um, verse 14, 15, and twice in 16 that the scripture uses the word savor or a sweet smell. That there are certain things with God that as we walk are a sweet smelling aroma to him. But, not, but then he looks at us and he says, there's some things I want you to do. There are some ways I want you to walk. Mm -hmm. Is as a human being, this 
this is what I want you to be able to do. He says, we're not like men. Which corrupt the word of God. But as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. I don't want to take the word, twist it and turn it, to fit how I want things to be. One of the statements that I make very often, one of my coalisms, is that it's good to know the word of God, but it's better to know the God of the word. It's good to know the word of God, but it's better to know the God of the word. If, you, if we only know the word of God, we will use the word to exact our laws and our perspectives. But if we know God, we know his heart, we know his intention, we understand who he is through Christ Jesus, then we're not going to take the Bible and exact punishment on other people. We're going to take this love letter and we're going to help people see that there's an, un that there's an unconditional love for each one of us. And no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, he's still there for us. And he's going to So I'm here to call question to performance-based Christianity and to encourage you to have a relationship with Jesus. To move in that relationship with Jesus to where now our life is centered around living Christ and not acting like a Christian. But living Christ, if we live Christ, there are certain things that we will and won't do. Not because it's the Christian thing to do, but because of the love that's shed abroad in our hearts that says, I don't want to hurt that other person. I don't want to hurt that next person just based, based on how I feel changes our perspective, but it causes us to operate as human beings falling in love with Jesus and being a watchman and a help for each other. So, I'm going to end the message there. No matter how well you perform, no matter how good you do, you're still a human being. No matter how well I do, no matter how well I perform, I hate to tell you, I'm still a human being. You'll know me by the integrity of Jesus. But understand this, you're probably going to know me by some mistakes I made along the way also. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to judge me by my mistakes? Or are you going to love me by the unconditional love that Jesus loved you? With? Are you going to do that with those who you are in relationship with? The ones that you love? that have messed you over because they've made these terrible mistakes in their humanness? <coughs> or are we going to love like Jesus loved? It's not easy, you guys. It's not easy because we are a performance-based people. But I want to encourage you from your place of belief in Jesus. Let's see each other as human beings and not human doings. And let's take out the performance aspect of Christianity and let's infuse it with the love of Jesus.
Lord, you don't have to stop. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We ask, Lord, that this message was understood correctly. And if it wasn't, let the power of your spirit come in and Hello. minister the intent of this message. In my humanity, I may have said things wrong. But in your heart, let the people know that they don't have to be performance-based doers. But let them be lovers of the Almighty. Bless them, I ask you. Let your continued power show up. We give you all praise for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Would you stand and hug somebody and tell them that, that you love them and then let them know that God loves them. We'll be having our community prayer tonight.